Right, you join me sitting in my new project. I've bought another Volkswagen T5 van. This is a long wheelbase, it's got two sliding doors, it's in silver and it has a uh, tailgate on the back. Um, it also has a very knackered engine, uh, it's done 350,000 miles and I think the engine's had enough to be honest, it doesn't want to run at all. Uh, I ran it the other day because uh, I wanted it running because uh, I'd like to get the CAN data from it whilst it's running to add to my knowledge of these vans and give me some uh, inputs so basically I can take the CAN data from the running van and then inject that into a van that's not running and it gives all the right wake up calls to all the other units although my current van works properly and safely and the rest of it it would be nice to have a few other ancillary things working like heated mirrors but they don't work unless <laughs> it thinks the van's heat uh, is actually started and running so I was trying to do that anyway so that's that's something I'm toying with over the, the next few weeks whilst I work out what I'm going to do with this van and hopefully through the good weather um, start stripping it out and getting it ready for its conversion I have been buying some bits and pieces I've bought a large motor from a bus from Germany and that was quite a good buy so I grabbed that um, currently it's an 800 volt motor and I'm not going to have an 800 volt system I'll have more like a 400 volt system or a sort of sort of 340 400 volts something something like that range um, system I would imagine so I'm gonna have to get that motor I think professionally rewound from I think it was Delta to star or star to Delta the other one weighs 800 volts for that motor and, and the other weighs 400 volt motor it's still a very powerful motor it's 150 kilowatts of you know sort of awesomeness with a lot of torque behind it as well. Oh, I've got no complaints about the motor that's in my green bad thing of uh, 060 times. I've just done it for getting me around town uh, in, in an efficient way without breaking parts of the gearbox because it's currently coupled to uh, a manual gearbox and there are a few little problems uh, so I've learned since with uh, some output splines and things breaking um, on the drive line. So, taking what I've learnt from the previous van, I want to use all of that knowledge and um, wisdom, as it were, and plow it into the next one. Some of the benefits I've done, well, some of the things that have benefited, have been to use the um, heating core, the heating heater matrix, as a cooling system for the winter. So just simply um, pumping the fluids, uh, cooling fluids from the inverter and the motor through the heater matrix has proved to be quite an efficient um, heater in the, in the thing. I've taken the chill off after about 10 miles of driving. It's quite effective uh, taking the chill off even when it's been like minus four. Um, it's been doing a good job. The only little problem I've had with that is I've used a Prius pump to actually boost the flow uh, around the heater matrix and that has failed just as things are starting to warm up a bit I hope um, so I've got a little choice there I'll really dive into it and fix it but it's right at the back of the motor inverter and it's a bit awkward so I've got to rethink that one I've got plenty of those pumps but it, that it, from what I've been reading online they're not apparently that good but we'll see. I've certainly been running it every day for the past I would have thought well since since the winter started I put it in, in the summer so yeah I've been running all winter and it's failed now so whether that's my doing or um, I'm sure I've wired it up the right way around it seems to be working quite efficiently but there is a bit of a which wire is, is the negative which wire is the positive question on that anyway So, I've got to... So, I've got a Siemens motor 
and I've also got um, four-wheel drive system from a BMW X5. Now, my mad idea is to have a four-wheel drive van. I often go into fields and fly toy aeroplanes and things, and getting stuck isn't really that much fun. So having a four-wheel drive van really does uh, appeal, especially one that had, say, the Mrs. Dip diffs, which would mean that I would be able to pull myself out of most situations reasonably efficiently. So that's something I'd like to do. Now, one option would be use the Tesla drive unit. It has been done. Uh, if you've watched Vintage Voltage, if you can get that where you are uh, in the UK, there's a series called Vintage Voltage, and um, they convert different vehicles each week. And they converted a um, Land Rover Defender. Land Rover Defender it was Defender and um, they put a te large Tesla unit uh, in between the axles in line, so it's in line with the shafts and they use the outputs from the differential to power front and rear diffs via drive shafts. They also change the gearing in that unit. Now doing the sort of rough calculation of how much you think that's going to cost it's not the cheap build not by any stretch. Um, the drive unit seemed to be going for about three and a half thousand. You'd need the gear uh, box parts, uh, different uh, gear ratio uh, kits, and that's a couple of grand. It's quite involved. You've got to fit it and what have you, which is fine. And also, you'd need really a, a center limited slip differential, which is another fourteen hundred pounds or thereabouts. So that, that is stacking up to be quite. Um, quite an expensive build but it's all quality stuff and I think that would uh, would last quite nicely because you do want something that's going to be reliable you don't want lots of nuts and bolts and horribleness that's going to fall apart going down the road because it's a pain in the ass you don't need it so um, I've, I've been there once with a copper on the green van and I have since sorted that out and it's, it's not a lot of fun waiting for a tow truck to pick you up so I don't want to go there too too often. Um, so yeah, there's that. Other options. I have uh, the gearbox and transfer case from an X5. I've also I've managed to get a manual one, which was quite hard to get hold of. Now whether that's the best option to go for, I'm not really sure. Because I've been thinking about it. And there might well be the option to take a automatic gearbox, take off the torque converter because you don't need it because you've got an electric motor, and basically just use the gears that are useful to you by uh, using the solenoids um, that control the clutch packs, actually engage the gears, um, and you can literally switch one on and it would be that speed, you switch another one and it would be another speed and as long as you get your combinations of switching things on right you try it on the bench with no load on it in case uh, you, know, you get it horribly wrong you should, or it could, maybe, possibly, possibly be possible to make it switch gears you might, I think you'd need a external oil pump so you can start moving in a gear and not have to spin the motor to select a gear that would be preferable I would have thought in a hill start situation possibly a way of doing it you do still have parts that wear out you've got an automatic uh, transmission clutch pack to deal with most of the other stuff is taken out of the equation uh, the electronics and stuff I would have thought it, there might be something doable there I don't know it's a rabbit hole to go down but at the moment I've got a manual gearbox and I've got the Siemens motor and that would be something that would marry up I think and work there's another option and the other option would be um, perhaps a Nissan Leaf motor now both the Nissan Leaf motor and the Siemens motor could be driven by the Scott Drive inverter I quite like the Scott Drive inverter um, the support's very good 
and although they're in New Zealand I'm all the way over in England supporting me and getting me going wasn't a problem for uh, the, the boss Scott, Scott the Scott Drive and um, he, he just helped me out and got it all going so brilliant so yeah, I was almost emotional about getting the last fan going because it was uh, getting there was a nightmare so definitely want to use parts that are proven to work with one another and not go out into the wilderness of um, stuff I don't understand quite frankly I don't want to um, stick my neck out too far so you know that's that's just a few things to think about uh, your chargers and what have you um, yeah DC to DC uh, charging AC charging I think CCS is a is a must for this van in particular not just for the vehicle to grid type stuff I'd like to do or vehicle to, to home stuff I want to do but also for um, fast charging when out now I would like a van that's got a, a capability of doing 200 plus miles 250 miles would be absolutely brilliant even if that involves a bit of careful driving i.e plodding along at 60 rather than 70 you know uh, if you don't have to do that that's, that's absolutely ideal so using the most efficient motor is going to be key to that the Siemens motor I've got I'm currently getting like I say uh, 2 miles to the kilowatt so if you can get better than that that would be that would be the answer rather than having a huge battery pack have a more efficient drive line is the way to do it but if you're adding four wheel drive then that has its downsides because of drag it would be handy for this vehicle many you know quite a lot of time getting in and out of the fields like I've said and also it's got tow hitch on the back so it's towing and regenning and things would be really quite good but you're going to need a strong motor to do all of those things uh, especially if you're going to put any weight on the back so every sort of thought you have is, uh, is another rabbit hole to go down and then every option you could possibly think about is another load of rabbit holes and um, you can get yourself quite confused quite quickly I'm sorry if I'm confusing you with all of this but there are a lot of options I can go with what I've got and then perhaps upgrade it later on that seems like the most sensible option seeing as I already have the Siemens motor and a Scott drive inverter will always be a, a rather handy thing to have around so I hope I've bored you to tears with this um, this is just a quick overview and hopefully um, we'll get to actually doing some stuff and I'll video that um, can communication that's, that's the thing I'm going to attempt first with the engine hopefully running and yeah hopefully we can uh, get that sorted and make it uh, everything I find out I'll make open source so if it helps some other people that's brilliant and also quite like to do something with leaf motor because yeah I think that's the, they're at least they're available in quite large numbers because they've made millions of these Nissan Leafs so yeah anyway I'm rambling enough bye for now